First Love by Ivan Turgenev. It's the story of a young man in love. And you know what? Even though Turgenev was born in 1818, so that's nearly 200 years ago, in terms of emotional openness, it's better than we are. It's the most natural and intimate book I've ever read. Hotel World by Ali Smith is a charm of a book. Like a secular prayer constructed from the lives of its characters, it leaves me comforted every time I turn the final page. My favourite book is Prince of Tides by Pat Conroy. The language is magical. It makes you feel like you've lived in South Carolina or else you desperately want to go there. And the story itself is a beautifully written, poignant take on how childhood um, and family dynamics affect, affect your entire life. Just recently, the novel that's impressed me has been The Lesser Bohemians by Emma McBride. In this difficult and unconventional love story, Emma McBride breaks with the traditional rules of grammar and language to produce a narrative that is intimate, compelling, shocking, and I think in the Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. It's kind of a masterclass in how to balance different characters' perspectives against the backdrop of a powerful historical moment. So if you're a reader or if you're a writer, get yourself to reading the Bosomwood Bible. To be Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I read it when I was about 14 and it blew my mind. That passionate love story is always going to resonate with melodramatic teens, all that angst and woe and bad weather. But also, it really inspired me to want to create my own worlds, my own characters, and all that mind magic. The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith. Highsmith does a fabulous job of making us empathise with Tom Ripley, who turns out to be a serial killer and leaves a strew of bodies in his wake. Um, the Mediterranean backdrop really adds something special to the novel as well. If you like crime fiction like me, read it, you'll love it. Tom's Midnight Garden by Philippa Pierce. It was written in 1958. I think a lot of people will know it. It's about a lonely boy called Tom who, when the clock strikes 13, stumbles on a beautiful garden in the place where he's staying and makes friends with Hattie, who might be a ghost. I read it as a child and loved it, but I love it even more as an adult. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. I've chosen it because Alice is just everywhere. Uh, not just in everybody's books, although of course she's been turning up in fiction pretty much since she first wandered down the rabbit hole, uh, but also in every field of modern life. Uh, you find Alice in politics, you find her in mathematics, uh, you find her in physics, you find her in evolutionary biology, in game theory, uh, in the visual arts, in cinema, pretty much everywhere you look you find Alice somewhere. And I just find it extraordinary that she was created by a Victorian clergyman who taught mathematics in Oxford. Anna Crennan by Leo Tolstoy. It's a beautiful book through and through. The mushroom picking scene is my favourite in literature. It's a, an important book uh, that bridged realism with modernism and in, in that sense a lot of writers owe a lot to this book, myself included, uh, and it, it's just an absolute classic. What I really love about Total Chaos by Jean-Claude Izzo is Izzo's ability to make the port city of Marseille into a character almost as vital as his protagonist Fabio Montel. You can feel it. You can almost taste the anise of the pastiches being enjoyed along the viewport. It's noir, but at the same time it's real. My favourite novel is The End of the Affair by Graham Greene. It has been for 15 years or so. It's the only book I've read probably more than about three times. It's one of the 20th century's greatest writers absolutely just letting rip on love and God. Uh, and if you look very closely as well, it shows you how to structure a novel perfectly. You should definitely check it out if you haven't already. Birdsong by Sebastian Folks. Um, if you haven't read it, you really need to read it. It's a polemic against war, but it just grabs your heart and um, leaves you shaken. I love this book. Uh, I will remember it forever. Alan Garner, Red Shift, 158 pages, three time periods at the same time, three characters, Macy, Thomas, Tom, linked by one stone axe. Condensed, opaque, brilliant.